The convention is a very comprehensive document and it sets legally, stand, legally binding standards in this field in Europe for the very first time and that's why it is a very important document and one could say long overdue but it is finally here and that is a very welcome development. The Council of Europe has been campaigning uh, for the protection of women and other uh, people uh, for quite some time now. What is different in this convention compared with, say, the campaign against domestic violence that the Council of Europe has had in, in past years? Well, this convention now sets legally binding obligations for those governments that choose to ratify it. And that means that they will be, for the very first time, they will be legally obliged to take a, 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 wide, a wide variety of measures and these are measures in, in the areas of the four P's that, as we call them, the area of um, prevention of violence, protection of its victims, prosecution of the perpetrators and then in the overall area of policy taking, co uh, coordinate and comprehensive policies. And because these are legally binding obligations, there are no excuses not to act and that is very different from a campaign that is simply an awareness raising strategy. So what redress can uh, people or, or states take if they find that uh, a, a, mem a, a part of this convention has been breached? The convention foresees a number of, um, of measures in the area of criminal law or, or law in general, civil law measures and criminal law measures. And that means that um, governments that ratify the convention will have to improve their legislation, improve um, access to criminal justice, make sure that judges, prosecution services, the police cooperate better and um, enhance their capacity to actually um, bring cases to court and make sure that there are convictions in cases that de deserve convictions. And that means uh, a lot of improvements in the area of national criminal le legislation and it will be up to the national, or it depends on the national legal system, what type of redress a victim will have. But should there be no redress available, should there be any difficulties in seeking criminal justice or getting other help, getting help from the police, getting help from prosecution services, etc., there will be a monitoring body established under the convention and it will be the task of this body to ensure that the measures foreseen in the convention are implemented by state parties. And should that not be the case, this will be reported on. Governments, some of them may well say, this is going to cost me money, this is going to cost me time. What's in it for them? Money and time is always the argument that is used um, in order, uh, or that is used as an excuse for not acting. But in the long run, having women and other and, and men and the elderly suffer domestic violence, and having women suffer forced marriage, stalking, sexual harassment, forced sterilization, forced abortion, sexual violence, rape is ultimately so much more costly when you think of um, the, the, the number of services that they need, the resources that are, that are required to help them, etc. So uh, investing in prevention, which is also a big um, part of the convention, will be so much more cost effective than actually um, dealing with the aftermath of violence. So it is worthwhile to take a look at the convention and see what it offers and is, it is in particular in the field of um, prevention where there's a lot in it for the governments.